Good morning. Good morning. Praise give me honor to God who is the head of my life, giving honor to my pastor, Kamal Welcher, First Baptist Church family and the community. Welcome, welcome. We are so happy to be here this morning in this order of worship. We are hoping that you'll enjoy the service and the word that God has given to our pastor, Kamal Welcher. Bless you. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Sister Pace. You all this morning, first of all, good morning. First of all, this is a day that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. First of all, if you woke up this morning with breath in your body, my grandma said the rocks ought not cry out on your behalf. You ought to be able to say, bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. You all know uh, it is always good to see newfound talents. Amen. This is the, one of my first times getting to hear just how much fire the Holy Spirit has placed in my saxophone player. <laughs> it is good that we use whatever instrument, whatever methods we have to bless the name of our Lord. I honor our music ministry. I honor all of our, our, our members. And I need to just give a few announcements this morning. Um, the first thing I want to do is encourage all of our members, our friends and families, utilize social distancing, Utilize your mask, utilize your gloves when appropriate. Wash your hands multiple times a day. Do it till you're just tired of it. Remember not to scratch your eye or rub your nose. Do everything that you can physically to protect yourself. This is one of the first times I can ever remember receiving because uh, if you traveled into DeKalb County on the day of the Amber Alert style warning, it got to the point where the numbers were so high, every person whose cell phone entered the county got a warning. Just as it is when a child is missing that says, look, the, 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 the rates and the growth of COVID-19 are so far gone that we need to send this to every human being that walks into this space. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. I pray health and strength. I pray your protection in the Lord, but I'm also asking you, charging you, encouraging you, telling you, wear your mask, social distance, avoid large crowds, take care of our bodies. Our numbers in Georgia are higher than they were when we first started quarantining. So let's act as passionate as we did when we first started quarantining. Amen, amen, amen. Now, now the, the other announcements are pretty upbeat. I have a congratulations. Uh, Y'all, the, the elders have caught up with the young adults and the youth, and we had a, a nice little reunion service on this Sunday morning. So if you did not catch it this Sunday morning, next Sunday you can. All three of our adult Bible studies are back rocking and rolling. We want to send love and blessings to Sister Glenda Snow and uh, Deacon Thickpin and, and the crew and Deacon Young and, and, and Deacon uh, Cortland and all the men. Our, our you know, the adults now, we, we're still in the, in the Word now. But y'all know once, once we went virtual, the youth and the young adults just start making us, they start making us look bad, y'all. Okay, amen, amen. So we're, we're about to start having numbers again where the adults have more than the kids, okay? Because they've been off the chain. Their, their attendance is outstanding, okay? The children don't need often parental help. Parents are calm, they appear that they're controlling it, they're unmuting, they're muting, they're typing in messages in the chat, in the midst of the, so again, you may need them to help you, amen? So instead of you helping your baby get online, ask your baby if you couldn't get in Sunday school, call either your teacher or the office. We would love to have all of our family reunions in Sunday morning, virtual Sunday morning Bible study. And then starting next Sunday, next Sunday, you all, it's a big kickoff. We have an academic achievement Sunday, July, 20, uh, J July 19th. And apparently I'm supposed to, add, they gave me a flyer with a look. Y'all can't see the cute picture, but I can. It's got my, my little honey poo on the flyer. Amen. So Dr. Adria Welcher, uh, the professor uh, and, and, and uh, director of general uh, gen ed curriculum over at Morehouse College. Well, that's a good school. Uh, we'll be speaking 
on next Sunday as a part of uh, the service there as we, as we celebrate the academic achievements of our youth. Y'all come on, come on, come on next week. Make sure you're there. And that is a kickoff as we celebrate our youth to Vacation Bible School. So from on the 19th, academic achievement, the 20th through the 24th, we're having our first ever virtual vacation Bible school. It will kick off, I believe it's gonna start at about 11 a.m. More information will come. Go to the website, call, whatever you need to do, make sure you are there. And that's, in, that's an invite across the world. So just like we are having a virtual service this morning, it allows us to actually expand our Vacation Bible School and to invite you. Now y'all work with us. There are gonna be some things that are great. You don't have to drive 55 minutes in traffic, but y'all know it's hard to sing together on Zoom and go to meeting now. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna sound like round, round, round robin. And we're gonna do whatever we gotta do, amen to glorify and praise the name of our Lord. I think that's it, y'all. I feel, feel like I may have missed one. Oh, yes, make sure that you join us this tomorrow, Monday morning, for our prayer, 7 a.m. Uh, on, on the prayer line, as well as Wednesday for our Bible study virtual. Y'all, come on now. The Bible study's been on fire, so if you haven't been there, y'all come on out and get it. Uh, uh, I think, is, is, it, is it Brother Broom? Who's up next? Hey, amen, amen. Brother Broom, I believe it's on you. Uh-huh. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. <laughs> Good morning, First Baptist Church family, those here and around the world. It is now our offertory appeal, and you have four ways to give. We are always very appreciative of your faithful generosity, and we have not missed a single day of our normal distribution of meals to our homeless community. However, whether it's lights or meals, we still continue to need your support spiritual and financial. So here are your four ways to provide your financial gift. The first is text to give. From any cell phone device, text F B C E P, the numbers 73256, and follow the prompt. Again, text the letters F B C E P, the five digit number 73256 and follow the prompts. My favorite snail mail, it still works. It will get here. Send it to the address, First Baptist Church, East Point at 2813 East Point Street, East Point, Georgia 30344. Again, that address is First Baptist Church, East Point at 2813. East Point Street, East Point, Georgia, 30344. PayPal is another convenient way. Click the Give button on our website at firstbaptistchurcheastpoint.org. Again, PayPal at our website, firstbaptistchurcheastpoint.org. And last and definitely not least, you can always use Cash App. That is dollar sign FB. C-E-P-G-A, again, dollar sign, cash sign, F-B-C-E-P-G-A. May, may the Lord add a blessing to his holy word. Thank you very much. Good morning. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not into that own understanding. In all our ways, not just one or two, but in all our ways, acknowledge him. And it's a promise that God will direct our path. I'm here to do our prayer. And the thing is, is that we need direction in all things. How we spend our time, how we utilize our talent, and how we disperse our treasures. All of it is to give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so we need God's guidance. We need the encouragement and the blessed reassurance that as we give from the heart, God will multiply. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, our Father, we come before you giving you thanks and praise and honor. Lord, we recognize that we cannot 
outgive you. You are so awesome. You are so faithful. You are merciful. You are kind. And Lord, you continue to shower us with your love. You continue to look upon us to God through eyes of potential, prodding us to go forth and trust you in all that we do. But when we do it, dear God, from our heart, God, you bless it. And we thank you. So all those who are giving of their time, their talent, and their treasure, we lift it up to the altar of loving kindness, the altar of grace and mercy. Thank you, dear God, for giving us the opportunity to worship you in this way. So, Lord, we just bow down to you. We glorify you and know it's already done. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whoo, in Jesus' name, we pray it all. Amen, amen, and amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Hmm. Today's scripture comes from Genesis chapter 41, verses 25 through 43. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, The dreams of Pharaoh are one and the same. God has revealed to Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good heads of grain are seven years. It is one and the same dream. The seven lean, ugly cows that came up afterwards are seven years, and so are the seven worthless heads of grain scorched by the east wind. They are seven years of famine. It is just as I said to Pharaoh, God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Seven years of great abundance are coming throughout the land of Egypt, but seven years of famine will follow them. Then all of the abundance in Egypt will be forgotten, and the famine will ravage the land. The abundance in the land will not be remembered, because the famine that follows it will be so severe. The reason the dream was given to Pharaoh in two forms is that the matter has been firmly decided by God, and God will do it soon. And now let Pharaoh look for a discerning and wise man to put him in charge of the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh appoint commissioners over the land to take a fifth of the harvest of Egypt during the seven years of abundance. They should collect all the food of those good years that are coming and store up the grain under the authority of Pharaoh to be kept in the cities for food. This food should be held in the reserve for the country to be used during the seven years of famine that will come upon Egypt, so that the country may not be ruined by the famine. The plan seemed good to Pharaoh and to all of his officials. So Pharaoh asked them, can we find anyone like this man, one who the spirit of God? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has made this all known to you, there is no one so discerning and wise as you. You will be in charge of my palace and all of my people are to submit to your orders. Only with respect to the throne will I be greater than you. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring from his finger and put it on Joseph's finger. He dressed him in robes and fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. He had, he had him ride in a chariot as his second in command. And people shouted before him, make way. Thus he put him in charge of the whole land of Egypt. The word of God for the people of God. Our perfect and holy God, we bless and love you. We thank you for being a sovereign, all-loving, never-ending God. We thank you that you're never caught off guard by situations and circumstances that frighten us. We thank you, Lord, that you desire what is excellent for us, that you know the plans that you have for us, and they are for us to be blessed, to prosper, even as our souls prosper. We bless you, Lord, for being a loving God. Now, Lord, we pray that you will intercede and bring healing where there is illness, that you intercede and bring health in our minds, our bodies, 
and our spirit in the midst of a season of pandemic. That you bring unity where there has been division, that you bring a restoration of joy and motivation, that you restore the ways that we minister to others, relight the fires of passion of church family, of church life, of our families, of our lives. Have your way. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O holy Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. It is well <laughs> with my soul. It is well with my soul. I, I encourage uh, our youngest uh, viewers to keep on living. That's how my grandmama used to say, just keep on living. That sometimes phrases sound like uh, they're, they're just superfluous or they're, they're just slogans that we use. So they, they sound like filler. You know, they sound, sound like it's just something that the, the, the piano player sounded good on, so everybody must have moved a little. It's well. It is well. It was only, it's, it's one sin. It is well with my soul. But you keep on living, you'll have days where that can put peace, that can restore joy, that can just remind you of what team you're on. There are times where the stuff in front of you is out of your control. Where the real issues that are bothering your heart are beyond your hand of, of, of authority. Where the things that, that are, are waking you up in the midnight hour are just a little bit beyond the, the, the talents and gifts that are inside of your being. And it's good to just remember every now and then to hear it is well. To remember that the God you serve has been doing this for ages. <laughs> that the, the little problems that we're facing now caught us off guard, not God. That the God we serve, this eternally victorious Lord of ours, that we get to sit on the sidelines and cheer and pretend as if the plays look interesting when we've already seen the final result. We win. We, we, it is well, oh, bless the name of the Lord. That, that, oh, see, you brought, brought Sister Marilyn's back and, you know, Dean, uh, Brother Dixon and Rem Epps over here got me doing a whole little mini sermon. I, I didn't plan on beginning that way, uh, uh, Brother, Brother Roosevelt. De, 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 I'm going to have to start, I'm going to have to start over now because they got me happy. They got me happy. They got me happy. We're actually, I was supposed to begin here by, by bringing up the OJs. Amen. I was supposed to talk about Money, 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 money. You know, because they say, you know, no, no, people will steal from their mother. Uh -huh. I heard, heard the old days say, for the love of money, people will rob their own brother. Uh -huh. I've even heard it corrected where some folk used to say money was the root of all evil. But no, 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 no. The love of money uh, is the root of all kinds of evil. Amen. We can look at the actual vernacular there in the scripture as to whether it's the root of all kinds of evil, like a whole bunch of stuff, or it's actually the root of every kind of evil. But either way, it's a whole lot of evil because folks are loving the money. Yeah. And here in the text today, I like to give a before and after understanding that there will be, all right, some sermonic presentation that deals with finances today. I want to give you the opportunity to consciously choose to continue to listen to scripture even though the pastor's going to talk about money. I know that we like to pretend there are more verses in the Bible about sexual immorality than there are about money, but that's just not true. I know we like to pretend that how we treat the foreigner is more popular in the Bible than the scriptures about money. That's just not true. And I can't skip over, watch it, watch it, so I need to say it up front as well as, as introduce it with something, you know, some of us have to have a, a nice nostalgic feeling, amen? So if you're thinking about old New Jack City and whatnot and you, you know, pretending you're Nino Brown, I got you right where I want you, right here, so I can talk to you about what thus saith the law. Here in the text, we revisit part three of a space we've been journeying in with young brother Joseph. 
We've watched him from 18 become now what we would consider a young adult, but really he's just an adult. He, he's hit 30, okay? So he's, he's grown, grown. But we, 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 we came into the situation when, when Joseph was just 17 and we saw him dealing with family struggles, amen? And week one, we rocked and rolled with how, 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 how much we are impacted by family systems that aren't our origin but are what we receive. Watch it, watch it. How how much the stuff you didn't start still comes to pass in your life. How much whether your daddy like one mama more than the other manifests in the way the brothers treat each other. How much whether your mama like one daddy better than the other. How much that manifests in who's expected to go to college and who's expected to go to jail. How much the stuff we do as grown folk can poison our babies. Because they're not simply listening, they're watching, they're learning, and most of our lessons aren't intentional at all. So sometimes we teach our children how to be tricksters, whether we wanted to treat them, teach them or not, Jacob. So Jacob, the trickster, who later became Israel, had some babies, and some of the issues the brothers dealt with were not their fault, because there were generational issues passed down. Now some of them were flat out their fault. So we saw Brother Joseph uh, uh, with his uh, dreaming self, with his Holy Spirit filled self, with his blessed and favored by daddy self, blessed by the Lord. He, we saw him receiving two dreams, watch it, two dreams, and we saw him, oh Lord, offend his brothers, end up in a pit and sold into slavery. And in week one, we really understood that this is a family affair, that deliverance and issues are not individual. But often the systems we are a part of, not only is it our responsibility to, to ability to, oh good Lord, it is our responsibility to explore, watch it, but also our responsibility to restore. That's it, that's it, come on now. And so here, watch it, watch it, as we walk down, we saw Joseph go from the pit to being enslaved, and even though he was enslaved, he rose up. He was trusted, he became the number two, right behind Master, Master Potiphar, old Potiphar, uh-huh. And, and, and watch out, he caught an, an, an illicit charge where, again, he was guilty of the accusation, though he was innocent of the crime. And that was enough to destroy his reality. He no longer was able to stay at part. He no longer had the favor of master. He no longer was seen as good by those who knew. His reputation was gone again. And then we find Joseph imprisoned when the unjust enslavement system didn't work. We replaced it with an unjust prison system. And Joseph is still on the bottom of it. But watch this. He's still honest. He's still blessed. He still rises up. So here, last week, I, I, man, ironically, we left Joseph at the end where he'd done many wonderful deeds for others, but the fruit, the product in his life hadn't happened yet. He'd already proven to those with power that he was blessed. He'd shown the cupbearer and the cook that he was favored of the Lord. He demonstrated the gifts inside of himself, yet, he was still sitting in an enchained space and place. We say that Joseph, with his Holy Ghost filled self, with his fire baptized self, with his dream interpreting self, still had to wait on the action of an ally with access. Joseph, with his holy self, when we left him last week, was still in prison waiting on the action of an ally with access. So as we enter the text this week, this week, this week, it has finally come about that after Joseph's two dreams were in Copenhagen, you see there's two of them, after he interpreted the two, the cupbearer was restored to his place, the cook was beheaded, and it comes to pass that Pharaoh is having the same kind of, 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 of ailment, the same stressor, the same circumstance that the cook and the cupbearer had. They have a dream. They had a dream that they couldn't interpret, took it to Joseph, and Joseph said, God will give the answer. 
So now when Pharaoh has a dream and he's already gone through all of the preliminary items, he's gone to his wise men and I don't know what else, magi, he went all the places where the soothsayers were supposed to have the answers and there was none. And now, watch it, this, this old young fella, this cupbearer, finally remembered. As he sees, watch how selfish ambition can sometimes drive you. He sees that Pharaoh needs something and he can be the one who delivers it. And watch the favor that he can get by being the one that brings Joseph to Pharaoh, somehow brings Joseph back to his mind. It wasn't necessarily that he all of a sudden became righteous. He's watching the situation. He sat there for two years and he hadn't mentioned this Hebrew boy. But once Pharaoh is, is a little bit stomped, he's disheveled, he doesn't know exactly what to do, he realized, wait a minute, I have an opportunity for myself to look greater in this kingdom. <laughs> now listen, I'm okay with you having the wrong motivations to do the right things. I just want you to analyze that too. <laughs> so I'm still glad he went on and told Pharaoh. <laughs> now even though he may not have had the purest of motives, the word got to Pharaoh that there's a young fella, a Hebrew. Pardon me, Pharaoh, I'm sorry, I should have mentioned this earlier, but when I was in prison, we had dreams, me and your cook, and we had dreams, they both were interpreted, and they came out exactly as the young Hebrew boy said they would. The testimony of your legacy goes without you. You don't have to chase folk around trying to get them to see you as who you are. Your reputation is in the hands of your God. So you can't waste life trying to make folk like you and make folk say good stuff when you're gone and make folk talk right about you behind your back. And may, you better say the story I'm telling you to say. You better see me the way. You can't, you can't make others see you the way God does. Trust the Holy Spirit with your reputation. Be good instead of fighting to make people think you're good. Be righteous instead of fighting to make people think you're righteous. And if you be, you don't have to fight with me and make me see God will do that fighting for you. And I'm, I'm setting some folk free because you got a list of who you need to set straight. And I want you to just lay that thing on the altar. I want you to let them know. Let it go and be. There are some folk who can't see you the way you are because it makes them uncomfortable. You going to sit here fighting with them till they get better? You don't have enough skill or depth to fight everybody else's childhood issues. Get on about the business of doing what God called you to do. Come on, come on, come on. Now watch it, watch it. So as we enter the text today, this is part three. I actually, actually consider it part three. It's still from the pit to the palace, but I, I, I've coined it a new normal. A new normal. I'm going to admit here that this new normal is actually a phrase that is utilized now more than I can ever remember. I hear people saying new normal as, uh, as if they're trained in some psychological expertise, but it, it's everywhere now. It's on commercials, it's on, it's on TV, it's in, it's in kids, it's in, oh man, it, everybody say, and here's what it really is, what it is, Rev, Rev, what, what it, is. it is an induction, it induces us to the next stage of grief. It's actually a phrase that is designed to help you release, to move out of this denial stage and get on to the next stages of wrestling with life. We say it to say to you, listen, you are waiting on a boat to come back that is never coming. You, 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 you're waxing poetically and, and, and looking nostalgically at this old circumstance of life that you will never have again. So you can continue to sit here wishing and missing all these blessings going by you or you can begin to adjust to the fact that, hey, 
It won't look like it used to be, but hey, it don't, that don't mean it's always going to be ugly. And so this space of new normal is where I find Brother Joseph. Not every new normal is uninvited. We're wrestling with pieces of a new normal that we weren't hoping would happen. We're wondering when the children will ever go back to school. We're wondering when we will ever start seeing numbers drop. We're wondering if, our, oh Lord, if, when, when an immunization is out there, will it cost $745,000? What, what is it going to be? Are we going to select who lives and dies based on our bank account? What are we going to do? We are actually in a new normal that was not our desire, but I would posit to you that Brother Joseph was awfully excited about the prospect of a new norm. Joseph sitting, having already experienced the pit, already experienced enslavement, already experienced the prison, sitting there waiting when he got the word that Pharaoh's calling him. Whoa! And he's calling me to do something I'm gifted to do. Oh, Sister Marilyn, he called him to play the sax. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. What I'm saying is I'm not being called to pretend I'm someone else. I'm being called before high places. My gifts are making room for me. And you telling me all I got to be is me when I show up? Oh, that thing takes a whole lot of pressure off a whole lot of folk. When I get in the door, it's me I'm in, right? Okay. <laughs> we can do that today, huh? Now, I'm not, I'm not telling you not to go study for your interview and do, do your research now. All right? You make sure you do your background check, find out about the company, make sure you are, but don't you go in there trying to pretend you're somebody else. You are important and powerful enough to look for a good match, not a offered job. You are important and strong enough to find a space that matches your God has made a place for you yeah. on purpose. Yeah. And you can't get lazy and not be prepared, but you certainly don't have to not be you to get where you're going. That's right. That's right. Be free. <laughs> be free to be thee. Be free to walk the rest of your life as you and like it. <laughs> okay, come on, come on, come on. All right, all right. So watch it, watch it. When, when, when we get to Joseph, when we see him, the Pharaoh calls Joseph in. He says, listen, I'm having these weird dreams. And he walks him through it, as the text says. He talks to him about these seven wonderful cows, and all of a sudden seven scrawny, ugly cows just pop up and eat up the wonderful cow. You know, a dream that turned into a nightmare. He talks to him about seven, you know, wonderful ears of corn. And as he's watching these seven terrible, withered, terrible, and, and oh, I, I should say this, even after the skinny cows ate them, they were still skinny and withered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These were pre-puberty cows. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Everybody in the room understands what I'm talking You remember when you could just eat whatever you wanted to eat? Oh, Lord. It didn't matter. I got a couple of them been living in my house now. And they, they post people, they still just, just eating. They just eat. You know them fellas, they just, I just, they, they just go taller. They don't get wider at all. They just, they just keep sprouting. Y'all remember, y'all remember them days, uh-huh. Now, now, most of us are in the committee where we gonna remember what we ate. Oh, what happened there? Well, you know, I did, I was eating you know, peanut butter. What happened? She gave me the whole pound cake. It was really good. It, so what happens, we can literally see this week what we ate last week. <laughs> so these crowds, I, I thought it was worth just pointing out that it's okay for you to be in the group that, that shows what you ate. But these cows, were, they, were, they, were, they were early cows. They, they 21 year old cows. <laughs> they ate all seven of the good cows and still was scrawny. As Pharaoh tells both dreams to Joseph, we start to watch the pattern unfold. Mm -hmm. Joseph now is interpreting, this is the third time he's interpreting or dealing with couplet dreams. Mm -hmm. There is actually a biblical technique that we often see within the Proverbs, but it uses couplets as if it were a literary device to really make you hear something. 
So I say a statement, and then I really say the same statement again. It may be a bit more, uh, 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 it may have a bit more artistic appeal. I may talk to you about how strong you are. And then when I say it again, I say you're strong and mighty. I, mean, I, just, I just use this, this technique of, of saying it twice and using the literary device to actually emphasize what's about to happen. So here, the first time we see it in Joseph's life, it's when he's still a 17-year-old boy. His first dream, it was all of his brothers bowing down to him. But then God gave him a second one to emphasize. Watch it. We don't get what it meant until the end. The second one meant God was fully affirmed it's going to happen. They can try to get you away from it. I've already decided it's going to happen. I told you twice because it's assured. What if I end up in a pit? It's going to happen. What if I go into slavery? It's going to happen. What if I have to go to prison? It's going to happen. What if I got wrongly accused? It's going to happen. What if I lost my job? It's going to happen. The promises of God are yea and amen. So watch it. We didn't know it, but God is establishing from the beginning of the story until the end once I say it, don't make me say it twice. You ain't got to ask me never again. So God has spoken to Joseph this way. And the first two dreams, we are seeing the manifestation of their meaning as we watch the rest of his life. The second two dreams also came in a couplet. But it wasn't too good for the second of the couple. That couplet was the cupbearer and the cook. And you all remember last week we talked about the ambassador has the responsibility to be accurate. And so the first dream, when he told him it's all right, you're going to get your job back, you'll be restored in three days, that didn't change the cook's outcome. The cook was told he would be beheaded, and he was beheaded. We see the same couple, but this time we see God's dichotomy rather than affirmation. The literary device of showing you extreme opposites rather than affirming the same thing over. Finally, we get to Pharaoh's dream. And Joseph is clear with Pharaoh. The reason you got two of these dreams is because it is fully affirmed of the Lord. It is done. The first thing I really want us to make sure that we remember what brought Joseph before Pharaoh, what, 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 what brought him into the room is, is, is one fact. Integrity is a transferable skill. Integrity is a transferable skill. Here, I want you to remember that for Brother Joseph, even though we wouldn't put it on a resume, even though we wouldn't tell someone ahead of time, well, well, tell me about your certifications and tell me about your degrees, we're not necessarily putting honesty at the top of our resume. It's supposed to be understood. Now, some of us have a problem even being honest about what we write on our resume. Amen. Amen. I'm a, I'll wait. I'll wait for you to go find your file and start editing. Watch, watch. But, but the truth is, it's supposed to be a given that you're honest. We don't recognize the value integrity brings. And unlike many skill sets, it is a fully transferable asset. To have a person with integrity can go with them from IT to ministry to music to, to law. Anything you want to do, you can carry integrity with you and it will serve to buoy you up. Here, Brother Joseph's integrity has served as a life preserver that has now brought him up yet once again into the face of Pharaoh. Watch it, watch it. You all have seen when your kids or when you yourself wouldn't, weren't quite right with your swimming ability, but you had a life preserver and you, you knew I'm going whitewater rafting, but I, I put on a nice little jacket and sometimes it's a little too big for you. So when you hit the water, it actually, it actually comes up on your head and, and you realize I'm not really swimming in this thing. I'm kind of being pulled up. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really in charge of being on top of the water. I can see that this, this life preserver is actually doing the work for me. That integrity of Joseph when he got put into the pit and he got sold into slavery, his integrity just, just kept raising him up. 
And now he's still enslaved, but somehow, no matter how bad it is and how deep it is under him, he's sitting on top of this slave system. He's trusted like nobody else. His integrity has served to pull him up like a life preserver. But he got lied on. Oh man, he got a good one on him. He has a sexual crime history now. He got put into prison, but somehow, again, the same way it happened at Potiphar's house, his integrity makes him trusted, makes him promoted. All of a sudden, he in charge of everything at the prison just like he was at Potiphar's house. The integrity keeps raising him up. And finally, it's not what he became different. It's what he already was that brings him up into the face of Pharaoh. He was an honest, polite, kind overseer, an honest, polite, kind warden, and he used his gifts and talents for two prisoners who did not have a fiscal means of repaying him. He gave and sold into their lives. One brother, he was telling him the truth. He knew he couldn't get payback from that. He ain't have three more days to live. But simply by walking his life day by day with integrity and embracing the gifts God put in him, it brought him back and buoyed him to the top. Don't take shortcuts. I know it may look like folk who lying are getting ahead. I know. It may look as if, you know, other folks not putting the right things on their taxes. They getting all these checks. I can, I can just cheat the numbers myself. Nobody's going to look. Well, I mean, uh, forget that. I, I, I don't owe them that time. Well, you know what? I could, they they should have gave me this anyway. I could just take a few extra. Listen, your integrity is worth more than any benefit you will get from the hookup. From fooling somebody. If you want to be in long term, even if it's a business relationship. Think of it as a doctor, not a used car salesman. I don't need my primary care physician trying to run up my bill telling me other stuff is broke. If you walk with me long enough, you'll have a chance to put everything together. I'll keep coming back here and we're going to preserve this whole body. I don't need you trying to come up. Tell me I need a new carburetor. I just need an oil change. You know what I mean? So you got to view this thing at, with the longevity of integrity is your main ingredient. Lose if you have to in their eyes with your integrity self. <laughs> Let them think they won the battle if you got to lie to show them up and win the battle. Come on now, love them. And let them see you. Let God handle your reputation. Second thing, second thing, watch this, watch this. Once Joseph had the dream, Joseph was given the dream. He was clear to Pharaoh, your seven years are seven years of plenty. Oh, it's going to be rocking and rolling. Oh, man, is this going, we're going to have new dot-com companies popping up all over the place. And Homes are going to be built everywhere. There's going to be 17 new homes in every neighborhood. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. People, people, people going to have three mortgages with no job. People, people going to just walk around here, just walking, just floating on water. Everybody is going to have some money. Good times coming. It's going to roll. Y'all, y'all, y'all know you, you pretend like you don't remember if you want to. He tells them seven years of plenty are coming, but just as assuredly as the high time is coming, the low time's coming too. Here is where I really want to sit for just a second. There is so much rich knowledge in this one space of principle. And you know, the, the, the way I'll sum it up is really just don't eat the seeds God gave you to plant. Don't eat the seeds God gave you to plant. Joseph actually has an experience of liberation and deliverance because he delivered a fiscal program. 
a savings package principle. He gave Pharaoh what was needed for Pharaoh, even though we don't see it as a part of Joseph's preparation. Somehow, Joseph was able to transform his little gift of God into the answer Pharaoh needed without any historic training in the area Pharaoh was going to suffer. If you are you good enough, you won't ever need to be anybody else. Let the Holy Spirit take care of that. But watch it. This principle of you never eat it all is the same thing every financial advisor in the 20th 20th century is, is 21st century is, 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 is per positing right now. It is a principle. And now watch it. We, we, we'll, see, we'll see the names change on, on the structure. But this principle is that when God gives it to you, you should never spend up everything God gave. If God gave you $100, 20 of it ought to go to be planted, even if you need to live off the 80. That this is not a principle that you're going to start once you have a thousand dollars. If you don't do it at a hundred dollars, you won't do it at a thousand. If you don't do it at a thousand, you won't do it at ten thousand. But this principle, watch this, it allows us to apply a divine godly principle even if the methods are transformed before our eyes. So now what it may look like when you're planting your financial seed is you researching and knowing the difference between saving and investing. It may look like you knowing that anytime you have a job that's going to match contributions to your IRA, that you max that out. That we don't leave extra thousands on the table. We don't have somebody to listen, if you're willing to invest in your future, another 2,000, I'll match it. No, that's okay. Keep the 2,000. We don't do that. It, it may look like you teaching your kids what a Roth IRA is so that if they're going to be in a higher tax bracket by the time they finish working, they don't have to pay taxes because it's pre-tax. And instead of you buying them new Nikes, you get them a little stock in Nike and put it in their own Roth. It, it, it may look like, watch it, it changes based on your system, but the bottom line is, I'm not going to spin this up every month and live check to check. I'm going to stop living as if I don't know a pothole is coming. You're driving a car and acting shocked when you need a new tire. you telling other people that I can't get better every time I get over a hump. It seemed like the Lord ought to carry me over. You know I need me a new tire. You are aware that all four of your tires have a shorter lifespan than your car. Well, they should have a shorter. If you want to keep driving, buying new tires is a part of the equation. If you keep spending 99 and a half cents of every dollar, when the tire bursts, you ain't got no money left. This principle may have different names on it now, but it applies both spiritually and financially. Right now, the fertilizer that, that, that grandma used to put out, the, 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 the compost that grandma used to make, the way you didn't throw away those eggshells and, and it got put back in, the way we gave nutrient and nitrogen-filled soil, that may look like compound interest on the other side. That may look like finding investments that give time and compound interest, but in either space or place, I am charging you, if you want transformation, you want liberty from bondage, utilize the time-tested Joseph principles. We don't eat all the seeds that God gives. I am not afraid to say this church Every nonprofit organization that you know, we thrive, not just survive, we thrive because God gives to the members, because God gives to partners. 
when God gives into the hearts of those who want the church's mission to go forth, that's the, that's the way the church survives. That if all of the members decided not to give 10%, if all of the members decided not to help be, get a new roof, not to help get repaired, it, it does not happen without God having discipline, integrity, honesty, transparency. It happens because God moves on the hearts of God's children. There's no need in pretending that this is magic. It is divine what you plant into the house of the Lord, what you plant into fertile soil. Yes, it will come back, pressed down, shaken together, running over. But I want you to give because you want others to be blessed, not just because you're going to get a blessing back. Whether your financial advisor now will label it charitable contribution next to savings, next to investment, or your old, good old down-home pastor labels it tithes next to savings, next to investment. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is that 20% still shouldn't be getting spent. Listen, listen. And that many times, whether you go to Dave Ramsey or Susie, or, that, that there's a 10-10 principle of giving unto God and giving unto yourself that I want all of us to utilize that we're always taking one-fifth and putting it back in the ground. And here, that brings us on home, y'all. We, 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 we see Joseph, and the truth is, the financial system that Joseph gave is what brought Israel, I'm sorry, is what brought Egypt their domination. This young Hebrew boy gave them a system of saving and preserving so that when those seven years of famine hit, we saw people coming, nations coming, traveling from around this world, traveling because they did not. They ate their seeds. They didn't have it stored up. And because Joseph told them, you store 20%. Every time you get it, one-fifth goes, one-fifth stored. It got to the point he had so much he could not even uh, count it because watch this. When Joseph interpreted the dream and gave the advice and told Pharaoh what Pharaoh needed to do when he suggested you find someone with integrity, someone to run the system, the Pharaoh looked and said, isn't that your specialty? That's right. That's right. That's right. Wait a minute. You didn't study at Merrill Lynch. You have no Gonsuela Business School background. You, 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 you didn't do any of the mathematics courses and more. You, you don't have any of that. But I heard that you're a man who hears from the law and has integrity. He becomes the chief financial officer of Egypt off of integrity. I used my dream. I obeyed God. And I was honest with anybody's stuff that was ever given to me. Mm -hmm. And that is how his original dream will eventually manifest. Mm -hmm. God already said your brothers are going to bow down. Mm -hmm. We just haven't gotten there in the text yet. Mm -hmm. God already said mom and daddy going to bow down. We just haven't gotten there. But what I do want you to recognize as we shift toward millions of new normals is that the gifts that you use to survive may not be those with which you use to thrive. Mm -hmm. The gifts that you use to survive, the habits Joseph had to learn on the backside of Massa Potiphar's plantation, the, 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 the instincts he had to learn to survive on the prison yard are not necessarily the ones that will bring him success when he's thriving. If you're struggling and fighting, outstanding, fight, but don't become permanent friends with habits of lack with habits of hard time, with habits of how to survive only, if we are going to be successful as a church family, as individual families, we gotta redream. Yes. We gotta re-see. Yes. 
We got to stop the grieving process and realize God gave us far more, more wonderful new manna, new land, new opportunities, new outreach, new ministry, new men. We come on. This new normal may have new leaders, may have new leadership, may have new skill sets. And it's okay for you to have come up on the backside of slavery and prison and earn your keep interpreting dreams and showing up folk how to store up money. You can display a whole nother set of skill when you get to another level of life and never worry about lacking again. And don't even be mad at those who still have a lacking mentality. That in all in all, y'all, let me make sure. Number one, integrity is a transferable skill. No matter where you go, integrity should buoy you to the top of God's calling. Number two, number two, oh, that you don't eat the seeds that God gave you to plant. And finally, the gifts that we use to survive may not be those with which we thrive. I thank you all for walking with me. Joseph's life, I'm going to be honest, we could keep redigging and returning. Genesis is rich. But what I want all of us to be able to do is to see the lessons God brings to 2020. See how God prepares you to walk this week. See how God prepares you to make a phone call to a family member you haven't talked to in a while and heal some breaches. See how God puts it on your heart to get prepared right now before the new normal because you need a new skill set. See how God pushes you to stop chasing folk, getting them straight about your name. Mercy. <laughs> See how God just releases you to walk in victory, in proud victory, not pride in yourself, but pride in your Lord. I honor our Lord and I invite anyone under the sound of my voice. If you're looking for a church home, First Baptist Church East Point is looking for you. If you have questions about baptism, salvation, you want to know what outreach opportunities there are for us. If you want to help or be trained, if you want to grow or you want to teach, if you want to be within a family network, you reach out. Go on to our website, firstbaptistchurcheastpoint.org. Fill out the contact us, join us card that we can add you to our email list. We'll add you to the e-blast. You all, there's a difference now. I'm going to admit now, I still have... 40 years of opening doors of the church and, and watching folk walk down the aisle, that's still, I'm still feeling nostalgic. I'm still waiting <laughs> to return. But for right now, I don't care how you reach out, reach out. If God has pricked your heart, we care about your life, reach out. Lord, we bless you and we honor you. We thank you for victory. We thank you for strength. We thank you for being a wonderful and magnificent God. Wash our minds, Lord. Wash our hearts. Renew our relationship with you and draw unto you. We pray for all of those who are not in intimate relationship with you and we pray that you will open their hearts, prick their hearts, draw them close unto you. We know that if you're lifted up, you'll draw all men unto you, so we give you all the glory. We pray that you will continue to increase and cover this ministry with your blood that you add from north, south, east, and west to our ministry, to our capacity, to our love, to our fruit, that we will continue to bear fruit for you. We love you. We honor you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. tomorrow because God lives